Welcome to the way to build wealth. I'm Ethan Block and I'm helping you build some wealth. Welcome to the show. It's a Tuesday and you know what that means. Tea Time Tuesday. And today I am drinking a very interesting tea from a company called Stash. Pomegranate raspberry green tea is the flavor of the day. Uh, I actually have not had this before, so this will be interesting. I have had teas from this company before, and I believe we've had teas on the show from this company before. Let's take a little sip here. Hot. It's not bad. It, has a, it almost has like a syrupy taste to it. Maybe that's the mix between the pomegranate raspberry and the green tea part. I don't know. It's not bad. It's not bad. I'm not sure I'd buy it again. Maybe. Maybe not, I don't know. It's decent. Let's get right into the show. So today, right, I just lost my train of thought, but today I'm talking about uh, what could potentially be considered a bare bones basic principle, sort of, or a sub B cubed P, and that is dollar cost averaging. Now I've referenced it on the show many a times, and the way that I've referenced it was saying, you know, pick your index funds you want to invest in and then put a constant uh, portion of money in either every week or every month. That is the definition of dollar cost averaging. It's basically figuring out a set amount of money, say $100, that you're going to put in every week or every month into your basket of index funds regardless of anything, regardless of what goes on in the economy, regardless of, you know, just money you're socking away, putting away, not even thinking about, you're just putting it in, putting it in, putting it in. Um, and it's really the best way that you can invest in your index funds. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for it. I'm going to read a quote from this book, which I've talked about on the show before. We haven't done a book review yet, but great, great book by Ben Graham, The Intelligent Investor. Um, I'm trying to think, should I read the quote now? Or should I wait a second? Let me, let me wait one more second. So, the best way to do this, uh, to actually apply this method, is most index funds require a minimum initial investment, like Vanguard's 3000 So you can't get away with basically starting off dollar cost averaging because you got to put the 3000 in to even start building a stake in the fund. So you put the 3000 in. Then from that point forth, you should think about how much money can I afford to put in the, f put in the fund every single week or every single month. I mean, month is probably the best way to do it. I say week right now because with the volatility in the markets, you know, the market could be very different this week than next week. So in a lot of ways, you'll be protecting yourself more and potentially taking advantage of the lows that we're seeing, which are like ridiculous lows uh, for the stock market. I'm sure you're aware if you see the newspaper or, you know, watch television or CNBC, which I don't necessarily recommend. We've talked about that before. Uh, so that's it. So you put in your money initially, and then you continue to put in a set amount, you know, per month or per week. Now, I've said this multiple times on the show. This money that you're investing, you have to make sure that it's money you're not going to need. And when I say not need, not need within the next 18 to 24 months. It's extremely dangerous, and I've said it so many times, I'm saying it again, but it's extremely dangerous to buy stocks with money you're going to need soon. This is too much volatility especially today in the markets, to think that $1 today in the market could be worth $1 you know, two years from now. I can't tell you that. I could tell you with a great degree of confidence in 10, 15 years from now, it'll definitely be worth more than a dollar, but in two years, in times like these, you know, I, won't, I won't tell you that. I just won't. And I don't want to scare you. Like we talked about, check out the episode on time. Two years ain't shit. So let me read this quote uh, from this book. So within this book, you have obviously the core text written by Ben Graham, and then each chapter has an appendix by Jason, I always want to call him Jeremy, but I'm pretty sure it's Jason, uh, what does he even say his name on it? Zweig, Zweig, I always mess up his last name too. But he's basically a columnist and a writer for the Wall Street Journal and a couple other uh, publications, I believe. I can't believe I can't see his name. That's wild, it doesn't even say it, does it? I know I'm looking up, I'm wasting time right now, but it's really bothering me. Yeah, so uh, a note by Jason Zweig. Jason, okay. So this is in, uh, 
in regards to dollar cost averaging and he brings out an example talking about you know the difference if you put in twelve thousand dollars you basically right before the great depression hit or if you had a dollar cost averaging plan and you were dollar cost averaging you know at the worst of the great depression all the way through it and the difference in the amount of money you would have so let me break it down uh the leading fine uh Sorry, if you had invested $12,000 in the Standard & Poor's 500 stock index at the beginning of, September 929, beginning of September 1929, 10 years later, you would have had only $7,223 left. Brutal. That was my own remark. But if you had started with a paltry $100 and simply invested another $100 every single month, then by August 1939, 10 years later, your money would have grown to $15,571. That's the power of discipline buying, even in the face of the Great Depression and the worst bear market of all time, which we're currently experiencing a time that could potentially rival that time. You know, and some estimates people say it's just as bad. I wouldn't go that far yet. So that's the power, you know, that is the difference. If you see a difference of $15,571, that's a gain of like $3,000 or a loss of $4,000 is the difference between throwing all your money in at a terrible time or dollar cost averaging your investment through the terrible and the decent and the good and the bad, just buying whenever because you don't care. You're just buying fixed amounts every single month because you want to build some wealth. I think that's all I'm going to do today on the episode. If you have any questions about that, hit them up in the comments. I'm on Twitter as well. I haven't said that yet. At eBlock. I'll link it up down there. You know, I am here for you guys. Feel free to contact me about anything, anytime, and I'll try to point you in the right direction or give you some input to help you down your path. Me, Ethan Block, helping you build some wealth.